Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing well. We're continuing our reading of Sunan Abu Dawood, Volume 1, and we are, I mean, over 500 hadiths deep in it. So, mashallah, we're in the book of Salah, the prayer. Let's begin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It was reported from Hamas who said, we stood up to pray while we were at Mina, but the Imam did not come out. Some of us then sat down. An old man from Al Kufa said to me, Why have you sat down? I responded, Ibn Burayda told me to do so. He said, This is laziness. Then he said, Abdul Rahman bin Ausaja narrated to me that. Al Bara bin Azib said, We would stand up in our rows for long periods of time during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, before he would say the takbir. And he, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Allah and his angels send their salah upon those who stand up in the front rows. And there is no step that is more pleasing to Allah than a step that a person takes to fill a gap in another row. Daif. Anas narrated, Once the ikama was called for the prayer, and the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was privately talking to someone in one corner of the masjid. So the prayer did not start until people fell asleep. Sahih. Comments. It is proved from this narration that if the imam becomes busy in some important matter after the ikama, then the congregation is to wait for him. Salim Abu an bin Abi Umayya narrated, When the ikama would be called, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would see the number of people. So if he saw that they were few in number, he would sit and not pray until they came. And he would pray, and he saw that if he saw they were a group many, he would pray. So few in number, he would sit and not pray until they came. Then he would pray if he saw they are a group of many, he would pray. So waiting for people to fill in. It was reported from Abu Masood Ah Suraki from Ali bin Abi Talib, peace be upon him, similar to that number 545 Sahih. Chapter 46, The Severity of Not Attending the Congregational Prayer. Abu ad narrated that he heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, say, Never do three people in a village or desert leave establishing the congregational prayer among themselves, except that shaitan overpowers them. So I command you to stick with the group Al-Jama'ah, for indeed the wolf only eats attacks the solitary sheep. For indeed the wolf only attacks the solitary sheep. Sahih. One of the narrators, Zayda, said, Asaib said, the meaning of the group Al Jama'a is the prayer in congregation. It was reported from Abu Saleh, from Abu Huraira, who said that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, I thought about ordering the ikama for the prayer be called, then I would command a person to lead the people in prayer in my place so that I may go with a group of people with firewood to the houses of those who do not attend the prayer so that I may burn their houses down with fire. Showing you how important it is to do your prayers. Reunification, you know. It was reported from Yazid bin Yazid, from Yazid bin al Assam, who said, I heard Abu Huraira saying, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, I thought about ordering my young servants to gather firewood, then go to the houses of people who pray in their houses while having no excuse. To stay away from the masjid, so that I may burn it down. I, Yazid bin Yazid, said to Yazid bin al Assam, O oh, Abu Auf, did he mean the Friday prayer or other prayers? 
So he replied, May I never hear anything after this if I did not hear Abu Huraira narrate the messenger, open the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, this hadith. He did not specify the Friday prayer or other than it, sahih. It was reported from Abdullah bin Masood that he said, Guard these five prayers wherever they are called, for they are from the paths of guidance, and Allah, the mighty and sublime, has legislated for his prophet, peace be upon him, the paths of guidance. And we, the companions, have witnessed a time when no one would stay behind from it except the hypocrite, whose hypocrisy was clear. And we have witnessed a time when a person would be brought leaning on two other men so that he may stand in the row. And there is no one among you except that he has a prayer place in his house. But if you pray in your houses and leave your masjid, you would abandon the sunnah of your prophet, peace be upon him. And were you to abandon the sunnah of your prophet, peace be upon him, you would disbelieve. Sahih. So, if you abandon the sunnah, disbelief is very close to that. So sticking to the sunnah strengthens your imam. So he mentioned paths of guidance. So how do you get nearness to Allah? Going on the right path of guidance. Quran, sunnah. Ibn Abbas narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever hears the caller, the Muadhin, and does not have an excuse to avoid coming, they interrupted. And what is a valid excuse? He replied, Fear or sickness. Then he continued, The Masjid, to the Masjid, his prayer that he prayed will not be accepted from him. Daif. Abu Dawu said, Abu Ishaq Asabi reported from Magra. Abu Razin narrated that Ibn Um Maktoum asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, O Messenger of Allah, I am blind man whose home is far away from your masjid, and I have a guide who does not cooperate with me. So do I have an exemption to pray in my house? He asked, Can you hear the call to prayer? He said yes. So he replied, I do not find any exemption for you. Daif. Oh. But how's he supposed to go through the streets? Because he says his guide doesn't cooperate with him. So at the heart of you're blind, it's very difficult. And if you're blind, you can't drive a car. And if you're blind, a lot of people rob you. It was reported from Sufyan, from Abdul Rahman bin Abis, from Abdul Rahman bin Abi Layla, from Ibn Um Maktoum, that he said, O Messenger of Allah, Al Madina has many pests and beasts of prey. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Do you hear? Come to prayer, come to success, i.e., the at hand. If so, then come. Abu Dawood said, similar was reported from Al-Qasim, Al-Jarmi, from Sufyan, but his hadith does not contain then come. So, pests and beasts of prey. I wonder what he's talking about. I wonder, it would be cool to know, like, what particular critters were causing trouble. Because if it sounds like, there's a, like he's afraid, you know, he don't want to be put on the menu. The virtue of praying in congregation. Ubay bin Kab narrated, One day the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, led us in the sub prayer. Then asked, Is so and so present? They replied, No. He then asked, Is so and so present? They replied, No. Then he said, These two prayers are the most difficult prayers for the hypocrites. And if you only knew what reward was in them, you would have definitely came to them, even if you had to crawl on your knees. And the first row is similar to the row of angels. And if you only knew its blessings, you would race one another to it. 
A person praying with another person is purer than praying alone, and praying with two people is purer than praying with one person. And the more the people, the more beloved is to Allah. Sahih. The more people, the better. The better. Uthman bin Affan narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever prays Isha in congregation, it is as if he has stood half the night in prayer. And whoever prays Isha and Fajr in congregation, it is as if he has stood the whole night in prayer. Sahih. We're going to write Uthman right here. I'll repeat for him. Chapter 48. What has been narrated regarding the rewards of walking to the prayer? Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The person who is farthest from the masjid will have the greatest reward than the one who is closer. Sahih. Because you're coming a, a greater distance. Remember, we learned that each step you take, right? Each, you know, the, the distance is going to be blessings for you. So, naturally, the more effort you take, the more you'll be rewarded. Ubay bin Kab said, there was a person who used to pray with us, whose house was so far that no one knew of any person who used to pray towards the Qibla from among the people of al Medina, whose house was farther than this, and he never used to miss any prayer in the masjid. Once I said to him, Why don't you buy a donkey so that you can ride it over the hot ground and during the dark? He said, I would not like that my house be next to the masjid. His response was conveyed to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. So he asked him what he intended with it. He replied, I intended, O Messenger of Allah, that my coming to the masjid and returning to my family should be written for me as a reward. So he said, Allah has given you all of that. Allah has granted you all what you intended in full. Sahih. So the donkey, looks like the donkey right here. And then distance. Abu Umama reported that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever leaves his house to go to an obligatory prayer after having purified himself, his reward will be like the reward of one who performs Hajj in the state of Ihram, and whoever leaves to perform the voluntary Duha prayer, nothing causes him to exert himself except it. Then his reward is like one performing Umrah, and one prayer after another prayer in which there is no vain talk between the two is written in the Iliyin Hassan. Abu Huraira narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The prayer of a man in congregation is twenty-five levels more blessed than the prayer that he prays in his house or in his shop. This is due to the fact that one of you, when he performs wudu and does it well and comes to the masjid, only desiring the prayer, nothing drives him, meaning except the prayer. Then he does not take a step except that he is raised one level and one sin is removed from him until he enters the masjid. Then when he enters the masjid, he will be counted as being in prayer as long as it is the prayer which detains him. And the angels pray upon one of you as long as he remains in the place that he prayed. Prayed it. They say, O oh Allah, forgive him. O oh Allah, have mercy on him. O oh Allah, accept his repentance as long as he does not harm anyone in it or commit hadath. Sahih. Abu Sayyid al Qudri said that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, a prayer in congregation is equivalent to 25 prayers, and if he prays it in the wilderness while completing its rukuh and sujood, it will reach the reward of 50 prayers. Sahih. Abu Dawood said, Abdul Wahid bin Ziyad, another narrator said in this hadith, The prayer of a man in the wilderness is multiplied above the prayer in congregation, and he completed the hadith. So, as m women... We know we can pray in our homes. You got a little taught, especially if you're a nursing mom. You got a little baby, got a nurse. You know, the, 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 when they nap, they got a poopy. 
it's very, very difficult. Like, if you had to walk with a little teeny tot and then a toddler and your husband's gone at work, that would be quite difficult. And in some areas, very unsafe. You know? And then trying to pray, you know, when newborn's crying, the toddler won't sit still, it's very difficult. If it's difficult at home, it would be difficult in the masjid and in congregation, it would be very hard. You know? So, the men have this time to have a place where they all come together and for reform their brotherhood and keep that flame of fellowship alive. Chapter 49. What has been narrated about the blessings of walking to the masjid in darkness? Boreda narrated from the Prophet, peace be upon him, that he said, Give glad tidings to those who walk at night to the masjid, that they will be given complete light on the day of judgment. Sahih. Chapter 50. The Etiquette of Walking to the Masjid Abu Thumama al-Hanat narrated that Ka'b bin Ujra caught him when he was going to the masjid. One of them caught his companion. He then narrated, he saw that I had not intertwined my fingers together. So he prohibited me from that and said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, When one of you performs wudu and performs it well and leaves his house, intending to go to the masjid, let him not intertwine his hands together, for he is considered to be in prayer. Hassan Sayyid bin al-Musayyib said, A person from the Ansar was on his deathbed. So he said, I'm going to narrate to you a hadith. I only narrate it to you, seeking reward for it. I heard the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, say, If one of you performs wudu and performs it well and leaves to go to the prayer, then he does not raise his right foot except that Allah, the mighty and sublime, writes for him one hasana. And he does not raise his left foot except that Allah, the mighty and sublime, will oblig obliterate from him one sin. So let one of you come closer to the masjid, or go farther then, when he comes to the masjid, and prays in the congregation, he will be forgiven. And if he comes to the masjid, and they have prayed a portion of the prayer, and a portion is left, let him pray what he catches, and then complete the rest. It will also be the same he too will be given will be forgiven and if he comes to the masjid and they have already prayed and he prays by himself it will also be the same he too will be forgiven Hassan chapter 51 regarding one who leaves his house desiring to pray with the congregation but finds that it has finished Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet peace be upon him said Whoever performs wudu and performs it well, then leaves to the masjid, and finds that the people have already prayed, then Allah, the mighty and sublime, will give him the reward of the one who prayed it and attended it in the congregation. No part of his reward will be diminished. Hassan. Chapter 52. What has been narrated concerning women leaving their houses for the masjid? Okay, another important one here. So, Abu Huraira narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Do not prevent the maidservants of Allah from going to the masjid of Allah. However, they should go to the masjid while they are not perfumed. So, no perfume, I remember this. Now, let's, so, you, you know, you have a good laundry soap, fabric softener, you know, that isn't super strong. You know, you wash your clothes fresh. You put on a fresh outfit, you know. It's like you just took it from the dryer and hung it up, right, when you have fresh laundry. The clothes are going to have a good scent. Um, in your closet, you can hang up the fabric softener towelettes so that it, your clothes don't smell like old, like dander. 
Sometimes your clothes can smell fresh and then they lose that freshness if you hang up some of them. Depending on the design of your closet, you hang some up or like how you stack your pants or your husband's pants. Sometimes if you have your clothes separate, everyone has different architecture, you know, but there's a way like in your hangers, you got your clothes, take one hanger and like pinch on there a couple of those fabric softener towelettes, hang them in there. Your clothes will be fresh and because that's a light natural thing you know but if but strong female cologne that's like so strong like there's something called like white diamonds like you know some grandma's got that strong perfume and man it is something that really invades your nose it's very invasive I have a weird habit where people go by me and I and if they smell I don't know I don't like smelling other women's perfume when it's light, it's like normal, right? Let's say she just took a shower, she put some hair oil in, walks past you, it's a light scent, no problem. But when they feel like when it's like a fog, like a cloud, it's like, whoa, and you're stuck right next to them, it's very difficult, you know? So, it's a natural thing though to be like, oh, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna spray, you know, mist myself, but just remember you're standing right next to someone, you know? And, and this is important, you know. You're in a confined space. And if your husband sees that you've perfumed yourself, he should tell you like, Hey, hon, don't go to the masjid with your perfume on, you know. Ibn Umar reported that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, do not prevent the maidservants of Allah from going to the masjid of Allah, the masajid of Allah, sahih. Ibn Umar reported that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Do not prevent your women from going to the masajid, but their houses are better for them, sahih, yeah. And I, and I know, go to houses, houses is right there, I'll put a little bubble next to that one. This may make some women mad, but let me tell you. You got little tots. It's very difficult. Everybody gotta get their shoes on, diaper bag gotta be packed, snacks gotta be on deck. You know, you need to maybe you need to bring a chewy, like when the baby's teething, you know, the rubber chewy. You gotta bring like a, a, a book, you gotta bring a stuffy, you know, water bottles on deck. It's, it's a lot. I saw a reel once where it just showed a mom, she has her baby, she's like, oh, it's a little one that can't crawl. And even just getting the stroller ready, she's ready. You know, you got everything you need. And then by the time she gets everything ready and gets out the door, it starts to rain. And it's sad, you know. But it's a, it's cumbersome. So uh, there's a, a feminist will read this and say, oh, how dare you. But you just don't have kids. You're just probably young, don't have kids. And... If, if your children are like in the fifth grade, sixth grade, and they can hold still, okay. But when you have little teeny tiny tots and you gotta cook and you got so many, you gotta, you got a lot to do, it's nice to be able to do so well at home. You know, but all I gotta do is put the baby in the high chair, or she's with her sister or her father, and then I just do my prayer and I'm like, okay, you know. It's harder because there's a stage where they don't hold still. And sometimes she will sit right next to me and pat me as I pray, but it's very difficult, you know. And and she will do a tantrum. If you, if you try to hold her, she'll do noodle legs, like she will have a tantrum, and that's quite difficult, so. I saw a very cool popular reel where a brother was praying and he was holding on to his child. And I was like, that's remarkable. But the child wasn't crying. And seemed to be having a good time, but when he tried to uh, prostrate, and the toddler, the little tot, is crawling away, well, he has to grab it, pull it back. It's very hard, you know. It's very hard. So, I see that as a mercy. Some may not, but you're just not being honest with. I'd argue, because a lot of these feministas, they're they don't even have kids, you know. They're just. Like at Starbucks, 
complaining on Twitter. Abdullah bin Umar reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Grant women permission to go to the Masajid at night. One of Ibn Umar's sons said, By Allah, we will not allow them, for they will use this as a ploy. I don't know if I think my husband might be in the restroom. I think it's the Amazon delivery driver. One second. Okay, I'll send a link around so I can go to Kaitu. Sorry about that. There's nobody important, just someone selling something. Total interruption. That's why we used to be able to put up a no solicitation sign, but that didn't really stop people from bothering us. Okay, let's begin. This is my name. Abdullah bin Umar reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Grant women permission to go to the Masajid at night. One of Ibn Umar's sons said, By Allah, we will not allow them, for they will use this as a ploy to do other things. <laughs> By Allah, we will not allow them. At this, Ibn Umar verbally insulted him and became angry and said, I say to you that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, says, Grant them permission, and you say in reply, we will not grant them permission. I, yeah, I know what he means. I can, you know, the Prophet just won't allow it. But I know like, what he's talking about. Like, like, it's like, oh, I'm going now, honey. He's like, where are you going? I'm going to the masjid. Like, are you really? Are you committing adultery? Are you being a sneaky beaky? I get it, you know, but... They're allowed to, but I understand his suspicion. I, I understand. Because, I mean, it's hard, right? It's hard, because you're like, going out at night? It was reported from Yahya bin Said, from Amra bin Abdul Rahman. That she informed him that Aisha, may Allah be peace with her, the wife of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Had the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, seen what the women are doing in our times, he would have prevented them from going to the masjid, just as the women of the children of Israel were prevented. Yahya said, I said to Amra, Were the women of the children of Israel prevented from their places of worship? She said, Yes. I, I recall that in the Babylonian Talmud about there was a line about not teaching women religion and if you taught her the religion you like made her a fornicator or something weird you know I have only part of the Babylonian Talmud printed out uh, because there's many volumes and it was like when I looked up to buy it to read it was super expensive so I just have to wait on that so I just went to the open source like one that doesn't have a copyright and just started reading it but I have it on the back burner but I, I have seen lines of that Abdullah bin Masood narrated that the Prophet peace be upon him said the prayer of a woman in the middle room of her house is better than her prayer in her outer room, and her prayer in her inner room is better than her prayer in the middle room of her house. Daif. So the prayer of a woman in a middle room of her house is better than if you prayed on the outer room, and the inner room is better than the middle room of her house. So maybe like your personal bedroom versus your living room versus your Depending on the architecture, like your second living room. It was reported from Abdul Warith that Ayyub narrated from Nafi from Ibn Umar who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Why don't we leave this door in the Masajid for the women? Nafi said, So Ibn Umar did not enter from that door until he died. Sahih. Abu Dawood said, Ishmael bin Ibrahim reported it from Ayyub from Nafi. He said, Umar said, and that is more correct. Mashallah.
And the mustard, you should be wearing the hijab, obviously. Don't wear jeans. Chapter 54, Rushing to the Prayer It was reported from Yunus from Ibn Shihab who said, Sayyid bin al-Musayyib and Abu Salama bin Abdurrahman informed me that Abu Huraira said, I heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, say, That dude is such a bully. That he was just playing on his toys, swinging, and like, Hedwig is like being such a diva. When the ikama for prayer has been called, do not come too hastily. Instead, come to it walking and with tranquility. Whatever you catch of the prayer, pray it. And whatever you has missed you, complete it. Sahih. So, come to it walking with tranquility. Do not come hastily. Abu Dawood said, this is what was said by Azubaydi ibn Adhib Ibrahim bin Saad, Mamar, and Shuhayb bin Abi Hamza, all from Ahsuri. And whatever has missed you, complete it. Ibn Uyayna reported it from Ahsuri, saying, Fulfill it. Muhammad ibn Amr reported it from Abu Salama, from Abu Huraira. And Jafar bin Rabia reported it from Al Araj from Abu Huraira, completed. And it, it was also reported by Ibn Masud from the Prophet, peace be upon him, as well as Abu Katada, and Anas from the Prophet, peace be upon him. All of them said, completed. It was reported from Shuba, from Saad bin Ibrahim, who said, I hear Abu Salama report. From Abu Huraira, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, who said, When you come to the prayer, come to it with tranquility. So, whatever you catch with the Imam, pray, and fulfill what has preceded you that you missed of it, Sahih. Abu Dawood said, This is what Ibn Sirin narrated from Abu Huraira. Let him fulfill it. And similarly said, Abu Rafi from Abu Huraira. It was related from Abu Dar. Complete it and fulfill it. And they who reported it from him differed in it. So the manners for going are to it's not hastily, you're not running, walking, not hastily. Steady, peaceful. It's not like you're running like ah get out of the way. <laughs> It's not like you're not like you're playing football. You know, like when uh, you got the football and you're running, and you're like, get out of my way. Like, you're not doing all that. Slowly roll. Chapter 55 On Having Two Congregations in the Masjid. Abu Sayyid al Qudri said that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saw a person praying by himself alone. So he said, is there not any person who will give him charity by praying with him? Sahih. Aww. Yeah. That sounds nice. Because you get more rewards, right? We just read the other hadith. When there's more people together, it's better. Chapter 56. The one who prays in his house, then catches the congregation, he should pray with them. It was reported from Jabir bin Yazid bin al Aswad from his father that he prayed with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, when he was a young man. After he prayed, they saw two people in one corner of the masjid who had not prayed. He called for them, so they were brought while their bodies were trembling with fear. He said, What has prevented you from praying with us? They said, we have already prayed at our camps. So he replied, Do not do so. If one of you prays in his home, then catches the imam, and he has not prayed, let him pray with them, the imam. For it will be counted as voluntary prayer for him. Sahih. 
So we're doing it so far. Counted as a voluntary prayer. Nice. You know, help him out. There is another chain from Jabir bin Yazid from his father who said, I prayed sub with the Prophet, peace be upon him, and Mina, and the rest of the Hadith, as number 575 is similar. MashaAllah. Alright, I'm gonna pause here because Hedwig is being a bully, so I'm just gonna try to split him up. Because that ear is doing nothing wrong at all. She's literally just playing, being goofy and silly. But Hedwig is a diva. Diva, diva. Selfish. Very selfish. So. Let me know what you think. I enjoyed this section, and it's always a good thing to reconnect with Hadith because it's rhythmic in a way and helps you to learn more about our religion and helps with memorization, which is great. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and if you'd like to read more about what I write and such, you can do so by going to my blog, which is www.subscribestar.com. I hope to see you there.